It's time to add another member to the workforce in the in the printing room. So today we are going to unbox the Anycubic Wash and Cure Plus to add to my Anycubic Mono that we have out in the back. So see you guys inside as we get this out of the box and take a good look at it. Hello and welcome to today's video. As I said, we are going to be unboxing the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station Plus. So this guy is supposed to be bigger than the standard Wash and Cure 1 and 2 that they have. Um, I'm really kind of excited about this one because I've got the um, Anycubic Photon Mono X, which is large scale. And one of the things that hung me up about my prints was I was getting big prints, great prints, but my Wash and Cure stations just couldn't handle the job. Um, and it was making a pretty good mess trying to get stuff cleaned up and curing was a lot more difficult. So I'm hoping this guy here is going to solve my problem today. Um, cause don't, I love the Photon Mono X. I love the size. I love the ability to print with it. It took me a little bit to get going with it. Once I got it figured out, it's been running great once I got it calibrated in. Um, I'm really loving that resin printer. I'm actually going to downsize because of that printer. I've got three small printers. I'm going to get rid of two of them and go to my Creality LRD002 and the Photon Mono X as my two primary resin printers. Cause I don't, I do resin printing, but I'm not that far into it yet. And I haven't, I'm working on getting a good way to bring those time lapses and stuff to the channel. So you guys can actually see this stuff printed. Um, but today is getting this guy out of the box, taking a good look at him and getting them ready to go back and replace the two Wash and Cure Station 1.0s that I have. So let's get this thing out of the box. All right, guys, I got the box down here on the floor in front of me. I'm gonna lift everything up onto the uh, workbench here. But of course, you know, we gotta take a good look at this as we pull it out. There's a lot of components to this, more components to this one. Whew. And it's being stubborn. <laughs> oh boy. All right, out of the box we go. All right, let's get the styrofoam off. That could be interesting for some kit bashing later on. So we're gonna hold on to that. Let's get this lid off, all right. And when it comes to scale, this guy is definitely a lot bigger than its predecessors, which is great. Which is exactly what I needed to be. So of course we got the manual. And this is our tank for the uh, denaturated alcohol. More styrofoam. We got our box of goodies here. Mainly our box of the power cord and we've got our, our catcher and then the rest of the wash tub and of course we got the fan down in there which magnetic connects into the table and spins and does a really good job for us on the wash and cure especially the washing portion so we'll get that guy down there and then we'll get to the more to the machine. So here's the actual lighting rod, which has the flexibility to point up or down or straight up, depending on the size of your models. And then we actually get down to the meat and the potatoes. There's the actual base. Now, one of the things I like about this machine compared to my others is I only get a, uh, two, I only get a couple times on my other machine. Um, I think the best I can do is six minutes. This one, I can set the time, which is a, a very key thing for me. All right. Then here are the other components. We've got a stand. We've got the clear spinny table, which will go down in here for when we're in the curing mode. That'll go down there on the bottom for us. Of course, handy dandy tools that we're gonna to need to do the job. And then the metal reflector for the base down here that we put down. So 
That is something that we are going to have to adhere. I want to check the instruction book before I do it. That's all the parts, folks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this put together and we'll get it turned on. I'm going to follow a couple instructions. Um, yes, I follow the instruction book um, just to make sure I get this thing put together right and to make sure that it's going to work because I did get one that's just a washing station. It'll run for a minute, no matter what time I set on it. And uh, yeah, it was too late for the warranty. So yeah, about that. So I'm going to check out the book here, make sure I got everything right. And we'll go from there, guys. All right, guys. So basically for the curing portion, I've got it put together. And right next to it is my old 1.0. If this gives you guys a comparison of the size difference of these machines. So this handled everything for my older printers, my small printers. This handles everything for the Big Eddie AnyQ Photon Mono X. So I've got it set up for curing right now. So we're gonna take this lid back out of the way for now. And some features I love. The reflector is really nice. The new table, I'm not sure I like all the divots in it. Because <coughs> um, for example, this is something I've done with the Photon Mono X, it's an Imperial Raider. The divots make it hard for this to stand up on its own. It wants to wobble. So I'm not sure I'm in love with that, but I'm sure it has a reflective thing to do with the light, which is good. So, and why I love the wash and cure stations is, you pop this guy out. You can take the reflector off if you want. Then you've got your wash tub. So, two big changes compared to the old compared to the first station. Now the first station, the tubs look pretty identical in some ways, but in the first station, this cage, you would actually hang it. And it would hang above the fan. For this one, they redesigned it, and now it has feet to go in there. So it's actually standing in there above, not having to hang, which is really cool. And I like the redesign for Photon Mono X build plate. So you can set it in here and then just set it right in the top there and wash your model right on the build plate. So that is really nice redesign too. Where um, I don't actually have an AnyCubic um, resin printer, so I had to print an adapter for mine to hold in there and sit down in there and it was just clunky and never worked well. So I always wound up taking them off and putting them in the cages. So major change, I do love that that will bend and let the light shine down on smaller models but it give me the height for my bigger models so definitely a big change and of course as i said the other big change is the control panel this one the best i could do on a cycle wash or cure was six minutes this one i get to use the dial and i get to set my time so big change if i need to do a 20 minute cure session i can set it and walk away which is really nice um, even just the wash because um, sometimes, especially with bigger models, it just takes longer. So, guys, I hope you kind of enjoyed this kind of breakdown, unboxing, opening of the new wash and cure station. Because basically, this big guy is going to replace this one completely. And it's going to let me downsize my shop a little bit. Because I think I'm going to go to one smaller printer. I've got three small printers and the Photon Mono X. I think I'm just going to go to one of the small and the Photon Mono X. Because honestly, if I need to print a bunch of small things real quick, the Photon Mono X lets me do two to three times what I could do. Basically, it let me do everything I could do with those three printers in one print. So, yes, it takes time to get used. You got to get it calibrated in. But once it's calibrated in, the Photon Mono X and then this wash and cure station on top just makes it great. Now, if you so got I've got it back here in the shop, and I'm going to do the first wash. So I've got my tank filled, relatively full. I got some Tie Fighters in there that I needed to clean. So here's what I was talking about with the time. So the dial. I've got it set to wash. It lets you change right there to cure. Right there. Sorry, I'm doing this with my phone. But you can see the dials there. So I want to wash the I want to wash these for 15 minutes. Or well, 16 minutes. I can use the dial to get it over there and set it. Then I press the dial and away we go. So you can hear it in there getting everything spinning and going. And my model's down there in the bottom, and it's making the vortex. So, just wanted to add that piece. Now, if you guys enjoyed what you saw on this channel today, hit that subscribe button, join the crew. I appreciate it. Everybody here is important as we continue building and improving our 3D printing adventures. So, and if you guys 
you know, just down in the comments, tell me what you're printing if you're printing something. Just let me know. I'm kind of curious to know what everybody else is printing right now. So, or, and again, questions, leave them down in the comments down below. I'd be glad to help you out. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.